All right. Good afternoon, everybody. All right. Let's get started. So I'm recording. All right, cool. So today we're going to be talking really brief lecture on um, presentations. And I'm going to show you a couple examples of some good ones and some bad ones um, and give you and throw you some resources just that way maybe you guys can um, maybe get some look at some previous presentations and get some ideas about your own. So before we get into presentations, let's just do the normal. Um, see, am I recording yet? Cool. Let's just do the normal. Let's talk about some upcoming things. So this basic schedule um, almost done with this class uh, today. Well, I guess this entire week is really dedicated to allowing time for you to get into groups and to work on your presentations. So today and Wednesday, it, besides from you know maybe like a five to 10 minute lecture on the presentations itself, um, is gonna be dedicated for you to get in your groups and to work on the presentations. So Wednesday's class and Friday's class is optional. If you guys wanna work during class, I will be here and available and you guys can come in during that time. If you wanna work outside of class time and you don't wanna show up to class, perfectly fine with me as well, as long as you and your groups are getting the work done. Uh, this coming Friday is going to be, once again, it's an optional class, but it's gonna be time that's dedicated for um, answering any questions about, it says exam three, but I meant the final exam. Uh, the final exam, paper, and um, any presentation questions you have. So feel free to come in on Friday if you have any questions about that, um, and I'll be able to answer them. Next week is the official final last week of the course, I believe. Um, and it'll be the final exam on Monday, which we'll talk a little bit right after this. And Wednesday and Friday is all about presentations. So all of this week, most of the time is dedicated for you to get in your groups and work, whether that's in class or outside of class. So here's just some basic final exam info. I know I've already gone over all this, but I'd like to just put it out there again. So the closed note section is 40 points. And um, once you open it, like all the previous exams, you'll have an hour to do it, uh, but it is available all day. So I think starting at like eight o'clock until midnight, um, you have time to take it. Shouldn't take you that long, not that many questions. I already uh, sent an email out with information about the study guide for that. Then the open note section is something that you've never, is a new format that you've never experienced before. Um, it's my personal favorite type of testing for a stats class, but traditionally they don't do that here. Anyways, you must be in the Zoom session um, in class on Monday, starting at 1.30 in order to receive the test. If this is gonna be a problem, like it says in the syllabus, please let me know as soon as possible um, if this is gonna be a problem. And we can work something out. Uh, we can work something out if you know if it's a um, if uh, what are the words I'm looking for? We can work something out. We can work something out if it's going to be a problem. Anyways, study guide slash example data sets and questions can be found on eCampus. I sent an email out a couple of days ago with more information on that. I highly suggest you look at this study guide, not only for the close for the close note, but for the open note section because you are allowed to use your notes. However, there is a time limit on this. What is it, like 45 minutes? And while if you know what you're doing, this test really should not be that hard. If you're not 100% sure you know, how to run a correlation, how to interpret the output, and how to do a proper APA write-up, I'd suggest you have the notes ready for this. Um, you, know, you can even have the APA write-up in a, in a Word document ready to be copy and pasted. I'd actually suggest you do that. Um, so you can have all of this stuff ready and available for you for this exam. So go crazy on your cheat sheets, as long as you're not working with other people, because you will be in a Zoom chat um, with me, as long as you, you know, whatever notes you want, feel free to use them. Here I just have, you know, here's the, some things to know how to. Um, let me just walk through them real fast. So this is a big one. Identify which statistical tests can be run with the given data. So if I give you a data set, you know, and it has six continuous variables, potentially, what you'll need to do is go, okay, well, how many different correlations can I run? It's going to require you to run through either in your head, or, you know, you can point, you know, whatever, you need to figure out how many correlations, how many one sample t-tests can you run, how many independent samples t-tests, those are the three, that you can run with the given data. 
um, run descriptives and frequencies to figure out mean, median, mode, skew, and range. So I may ask you, like, what is the mean for these three variables? And so you need to remember, oh, okay, well, how do I find mean for continuous variables? Well, there was that one homework assignment where we ran descriptives. And so make sure you have like, oh, you know, I got to hit click analyze, um, you know, whatever the buttons are. So I would suggest having a cheat sheet written down with all that stuff written down. Create and interpret graphs. We had a whole homework assignment. So any graphs that were on that homework assignment where it showed you how to do them, fair game. Uh, conduct a one samples t-test and a Pearson correlation, interpret the output and write up an APA paragraph, make sure you know how to do all that, and create hypotheses. So I may ask you, hey, here's some data, or here's two variables, create an alternative hypothesis that's logical, and then conduct, you know, a correlation or t-test, whatever, to do this. So here's just some things that you're going to need to know, you're going to need to know how to do. I uploaded a example, um, a couple questions and a data set, so go ahead and practice. Any questions you have about any of this information, whether it's the closed note or the open note, come to class on Friday and ask me, and I would love to answer your questions or walk through some stuff with you. Any questions right now about the final exam? Let me open up chat. Okay, not really seeing anything. Once again, feel free to email me or come to class on Friday. Uh, final paper, um, not a lot of information on this, uh, but it's due August 6th at 1.30 p.m., uh, but you can get up to 10 credit, 10 extra credit points if you submit it by August 1st, August 1st, excuse me, at 9 a.m. Make sure it's in a .docx file, so not a PDF or not a .pages, .docx. Um, and then to check the previous assignments for breakdowns of what goes into each section, that's just my reminder for you. You know, if you're not sure, oh, do I have everything in the methods section? Go back to the methods assignment, homework assignment, and it breaks it down, you know, what should go in each paragraph. Cool. If you have any questions about the final paper, um, feel free to stop in on Friday and be able to answer them. So let's just go through this brief lecture on class presentations. Uh, using the direct message or thumbs up or no, I guess there's no thumbs down using the chat feature. Has anyone tell me yes or no? Have you ever done a psychological presentation like this on a study like you conducted a study and you do a presentation? Yes, no in the chat. All right, I'm seeing a bunch of no's, a couple of yeses. A psych study presentation, in my opinion, is very easy and actually a lot easier than a lot of the other presentations you may have to do in some of your other psych classes. And the reason is, is especially at this stage where you, for the most part, have written the majority of your paper, or you should have following along with the assignments, um, some of you have even written the entire paper because I've been getting, um, you know, a couple people questions about the discussion or just the paper in general. So you have a majority of your paper done. Well, all you need to do is put this in presentation form. You have all the information. Doing a presentation after you write a paper, incredibly easy and incredibly, it doesn't take much time because you have all this information already. You've already written the paper. Now you just got to put it in less words in a pretty format on a PowerPoint. So don't, you know, don't freak out too much, like, oh, a presentation, another thing to do. Really not that bad. So why do you do a, why do you do a class presentation? Well, obviously, obviously just to share your research with peers uh, and practice your presentation skills because this class is considered like a WVU speak right class. So, you have to do it in a speak right class. You have to do a presentation anyways, but it's great practice uh, for your presentation skills. So here's just a really basic overview of this presentation. 10 minutes maximum. I'm not going to be super strict. Typically when you'll see this in 204, um, we're going like back to back to back in 204 just with the amount of people that we have. I'm not gonna cut you off at 10 minutes, but keep it to 10 minutes or below. Um, if you're going over 10 minutes, you, you're talking way too much and you're boring everyone. Keep it to 10 minutes or below. Eight to 10 minutes is the perfect range. And you're going to have a couple minutes afterwards for some questions that uh, other students will throw at you or I will throw at you. 
So you cover major sections of your paper. So you're going to have a slide or two in your intro. You're going to have two or three slides in your methods, a couple slides on your results, one, one or two slides in your discussion. So everything in your paper is going to be thrown onto this PowerPoint. Everyone in the group must participate. This brings up another point of please make sure you're keeping um, into consideration who's doing work and who's not doing work. So that way their grade can be reflected. People who don't participate slash, you know, help with the creation of the PowerPoint aren't going to get points and their grades going to be heavily impacted. I know it sucks to be in a group where someone doesn't work, but at least, you know, hopefully you, you realize that people who don't put in the work don't get the grade. So at least there's some, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but at least you know that they're getting a bad grade for not doing the work. So please make sure you're keeping note of who's doing work versus who's not doing work. CE Campus for presentation assignment. So in the um, assignment section, let me look, go back. In the assignments folder, there's a folder called research presentation. Um, go ahead and look at the rubric. I'm not going to like really walk through the rubric too much. It's all here. It does a really nice breakdown of everything that should go into each PowerPoint slide, or I guess in each section, because some of these, um, like, to, like the state the problem issue and association, that may be just one slide. However, discuss the main findings, maybe two. So don't say, oh, I only need, you know, nine slides. Actually, that might be enough nine slides, but just know that this is just a, a, a a breakdown of what should go in each section, not necessarily each slide, if that makes sense. Anyways, check out this assignment. It really is going to help you when coming up with your PowerPoint um, or what information should go in the slide. So really make sure that you go to this and you look at it. It also goes through the, grade, the grading as well. All right, another thing I want to uh, point your attention to is, let's see, where'd it go? In lab materials, there's a folder called lab resources. And at the very bottom, sample student presentations. So um, there's two presentations in, I believe, were uh, PowerPoint format here. But there's also a couple other ones that I uploaded with some information about it. I uploaded a bad example. And I'm going to walk through the bad example, actually, in a couple more slides. It's not horrible. It's just I would do things different. But I attached some PowerPoints. So that way, take a look at these and get an idea. I'm actually going to walk through them today or highlight specific points of PowerPoints that I like. Um, but they are here just so that way you can go look at them. I also uploaded um, this link right here is like an hour long video of Psych 204, so last semester, they're them doing presentations. I, so take a look at this if you want to see, oh, what the flow of a presentation, um, some more examples of student presentations. Take a look at this link at some point, fast forward through it. Um, you know, obviously, don't watch the entire thing, but just take a look at that to get an example of what a presentation kind of looks like. All right, so let's just briefly go through what goes into a Psych presentation. So I don't want to read off of this, um, but you have like a title slide. Well, obviously, you talk about the title and your your group names, as with any presentation. Your intro. So your intro section should really be you know like two slides, and you just summarize your introduction in your own paper. You've already done the work. Don't think of this as you know a lot of additional work. You've already got the intro done. Now you just need to th synthesize it into a couple bullet points and throw it up on, on, you know, into a PowerPoint. So some things you need to highlight, you know, state your research problem or the issue and why it matters. Why is it important to study physical exercise and self-esteem? Or, you know, just why is it important to study self-esteem and stress? That could go on here. You've all talked about this in your introduction, you know, so I don't, you know, so I, we don't need to harp on it too much. Um, you just throw it into a PowerPoint now and a couple bullet points. But so you talk about the issue, why it matters. You briefly talk about previous associations. So just bring up, you know, what does research say? Should there be a positive correlation between your two variables? You know, what does, what does previous research say? You don't need to summarize every research article. Please don't do that. You do not need to summarize every research article in your introduction. But just give me a general, you know, sum it all up. If you could summarize it into two bullet points, what does prior research say? Rationale for current study, research question and hypothesis. 
Um, so see, you can see how this intro should be broken up and maybe, you know, two or three slides. Then we jump into our method. And this is where you're going to talk about your participants, you know, talk about your demographics. What do, what do your participants look like? Talk about how you, do, you, um, you measured your variable. So we all used the Rosenberg self-esteem scale or the perceived stress scale. You don't need to have a PowerPoint slide where you really break down those two measures because we're aware of them. But what I wanna know is, well, what type of questions did you use for your own variable? You know, how did you measure physical exercise? What really are you measuring? How did you measure it? What questions did you ask? Did you reverse score any? Um, so just information about your variable. Obviously, you need to like mention, oh, hey, you know, we used the Rosenberg self-esteem scale, seven questions or however many, 10 questions, however many there are. So, you know, you can talk about it for a couple seconds, but what I really want to see is a slide on your the variable that you created. And then that part of the data analysis. So what did you do? Well, we ran a one samples t-test on self-esteem. And then we did a Pearson correlation on these two variables using an alpha cutoff of 0.05. So that should sound really familiar because that's your data analysis section of your methods. So you've already written all this. You now you just need to summarize it, shorten it, and put it into a nice, easy to read fashion on PowerPoint. So then the final two slides, or not slides, but sections, you have the results. So show me the figure of the scatter plot. Maybe, maybe you as a group did some other um, some other graphs that you're interested. Maybe one of your variables is really skewed. And, maybe, and you could show it here. You'd be like, oh, you know, unfortunately, our variable was really skewed. For exercise, most people reported higher exercise, whatever. Talk about that. Um, explain the results verbally in simple terms. So, you know, some things I want to see are, oh, hey, we ran a one samples t-test and it wasn't significant. So there was no difference. And so tell me what that means in plain English, right? I don't need you to read off oh, R parentheses 94 parentheses equal this, comma, P. I don't need all that. Just tell me in plain English what the results were. It says here, do not include SPSS output. That's right. It, you know, we don't need to see SPSS output. We, you know, perhaps you could have a scatter plot and you could say, oh, you know, first you start off talking, hey, here's what we thought about when we looked at the scatter plot. Then we actually conducted a correlation and here's what we found verbally right in plain english then in discussion you know two two slides in a discussion did your support did your results support previous hypotheses what did your study contribute you know there may be a slide on limitations and future directions and then a big conclusion slide at the very end and i'm going to show you some examples of some powerpoint slides and tell you like oh i like this about this powerpoint i don't like this about this powerpoint because no PowerPoint is perfect. Even the examples we throw up on eCampus, no PowerPoint is ever perfect. Even when a researcher, you know, when a, an advanced researcher makes it, there's always small things that you can do better. Anybody have any questions about the presentation content? Should be pretty self-explanatory, I think. You guys have all done this work already. Nothing new in here. It's just synthesizing the information you wrote in all of your papers into a presentation. You've already done the work. Now it's a little bit extra to put it in this format. Uh, we talked about this already, 10 minutes maximum. Um, keep it to eight to 10 minutes. Not gonna cut you off. After, I'll probably cut you off after 15 minutes. It, way too long at 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, keep it to eight to 10 minutes plus any questions and we'll ask some questions afterwards. Everyone must present. This is the thing you're not gonna, if. You know, you have three, four group members and only three of them present, present the one person that doesn't present, not going to get any points for this. Um, so everyone must present. Consider your audience psych students with similar background knowledge to your own. Assume your audience knows nothing about your topic. So, you know, this is, this is, an, uh, this is great for that introduction is, you know, to bring up or to introduce your topic to an audience that knows nothing. Now you don't need to describe, here's what psychology means. Here's what self-esteem is. You don't need to do that. But, you know, I don't know a lot about potentially exercise and perceived stress or body image and self-esteem. That's what that one group is doing. I don't know a lot about body image. Um, so, you know, talk to me about that. Tell me a little bit about that. 
All right, so that's the presentation style. Here are some of the things that we're looking for. Um, so there's two components to this grade. There's your oral presentation skills and then the visual presentation skills. So the oral presentation skills is actually is going to be graded individually. So everyone may receive a different grade for the oral presentation skills. And what makes that up? Well, make sure you dress professionally and you're in a professional environment. What I mean by that, it's okay to be in your bedroom, right? But please make sure that the lighting is enough that we can see you. Like you're in a meeting, just pretend that you're in a meeting for a job interview or whatever. And, you know, dress accordingly. You know, I don't need you to be, you know, suit and tie. A normal shirt is fine. But, you know, please make sure it's well lit. No, you know, no audio distractions in the background or minimize those audio distractions in the background. Good pace, you know, talk normally. Um, slow enough to follow. I know I talk really fast, so maybe a little bit slower than how I normally talk, but not too slow. This is just presentation stuff. Maintain eye contact. Don't read from your presentation or slides. This is actually a really key point that we'll focus on in a little bit. And practice. I don't want to see you reading off your notes. You're actually going to lose a couple points if it if it's very clear that you are reading directly, you know, that you're reading directly off the slides or directly off notes in front of you. Since you know it's it's only ten minutes, um, and each person should have a small section of the PowerPoint, not too much to have to memorize, or maybe you know some notes with just some keywords that you you know need to be remembered. So yeah, don't read off the slides, don't read off notes. It's pretty obvious. Then then the visual presentation skills. So there's going to be a component. It says Google Slides, but it just means PowerPoint slides. Um, it's fine to use Google Slides. Um, this is going to be a grade that the entire group gets. So it, you're going to be graded on your actual presentation itself. So make sure you know it's visible, 24, pot, 24 point font minimum. Um, just make sure it looks good. And we're going to go through what looks good and what doesn't look good. But all of this stuff can be found on the syllabus. So you know, look more, on, not the syllabus, the, uh, the group presentation assignment. Make sure you look at that for more information. So the next couple, the next couple minutes, I just want to focus on probably the next eight minutes. I want to focus on just what makes a good presentation and a bad presentation, specifically the actual presentation itself. So can someone tell me why this is a bad slide? Too much writing. Yeah, great. There is it's way too wordy. And probably what's going to happen if your slide looked like this, most likely what's going to happen is someone's going to sit there and read off of that. Like me as a presenter, if this is the slide I have, I'm going to sit there. There are many predictors of college student stress levels. One study examined, and we can all read, right? And I, we don't want someone just sitting here reading off the slide. And this is way too much words. Instead, now I, I maybe you've had a chance to read this, maybe not. But instead, what your presentation should look like is something like this. So this is taking all that information from the previous slide and putting them in nice, easy to read bullet points. So we can say, hey, predictors of increased college stress level. So it's right now it's very clear. What are we looking at? Well, we're looking at what predicts college stress levels. And here we have employment status, low college grades, credit hours per semester. All of these th things are related to college stress levels. And we could see, you know, we do say that in here, but instead it's a nice, easy to read bullet points. And if I was a presenter, excuse me, one of the things I could do is say, oh, hey, employment status is related to college stress levels. And then maybe talk for a couple sentences on employment status and then have a couple sentences or talking about the research that looks at low college grades and stress levels. And then once again, how many credits someone takes? Someone's taking more credits, they're probably gonna be more stressed. Here's research that looked at that. Here's what they found. So if you find yourself having a lot of words on your presentation slide, try to put them into bullet points. How about this? Can someone tell me why this might be a bad figure? There's actually a couple things wrong with it. There's no title. Cool. Yeah, there's no title. What else? It's bland. Yeah, it's bland. Now, bland isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, 
you're right. White and black, right. It, it could be spruced up. And I think then one right after this that we make better is spruced up. Black and white is fine. If you don't, you know, we don't need to be crazy. And you'll actually see a, power present, a PowerPoint presentation. It's not crazy, but it, it has a little bit extra color and it may be become too much. But here's an example of a good figure. So if we can see the font is a lot bigger, right? It's a lot easier to read. Now there's no title and that's not necessarily a bad thing on a presentation. You don't necessarily need a title if it's very clear what you're looking at. You know, type of school program and the mean writing score, probably you would want to talk about this obviously a little bit. You know, you'd want to say, oh, maybe people who, I'm assuming this is what the research shows, people who go into academic programs have slightly higher mean writing scores compared to vocation schools. Whatever your topic is, right, you just don't want to put this PowerPoint or this, this, this graph up and say, here's a graph of the data and then go to the next slide. Now you actually wanna talk about, well, what does this graph show? So you don't necessarily need a title, um, as long as it's very clear what your data is. And for the most part, I'm assuming most of the graphs that you guys are gonna put in your presentations, like a scatter plot, or maybe a breakdown of gender, it'll probably be very clear. But you can see we changed the color from blue to black, fine. Um, doesn't have to be black is okay. It looks like these error bars are kind of covered up in the black and you can see them in the blue. And obviously the font is a lot bigger, so it's easier to read. That's really what we want to, that's really one of the key points when you're putting a graph up, make sure the graph makes sense. First off, sometimes in some of the previous homework assignments, some of you guys gave me graphs that just didn't make sense, like a bar graph of all the ages. Here's a great example. A bar graph of all the ages, not that really interesting. Um, yeah, it's just not that interesting. Maybe see a breakdown of gender, that's a little bit more interesting. A breakdown of ethnicities potentially, majority of it's white, but really the main graph, you only need one. You can do more if you want, but the main graph I'm assuming most people are gonna have is the scatter plot. And that's what I would recommend you have, is the scatter plot of your, of your correlation. All right, um, let me just give a couple more information, then I'm gonna throw up some PowerPoint slides and just talk about things I like. But 20 points, so not a lot, but still you know, worth a chunk. Details on eCampus, you're gonna be presenting your work on August 4th and August 6th. And then you obviously need to submit your group slides, um, but that's in the syllabus. I do, or, or the homework, or the, the assignment. I do have to say the homework assignment does, the due date is wrong. I just used like last year's assignment uh, for this. so don't pay attention to the due date because the due date's off by like a year. But all the rest of the information is fine. All right, before I put you into groups, I just want to throw a couple examples up of presentations and maybe some good things and bad things. So here's one. So here's a presentation. It looks like the relationship between sleep and perceived stress. So they're doing sleep and stress. You know, they have a great title right, basic title, and their student names are here. And hopefully, maybe you can see along this side, I tried to make it as big as possible, but look, they have like, what, nine slides? So not that many, but, and it's very neat. So hopefully you can kind of see along this left-hand side. One of the things I really like about this is it's very neat and orderly. However, there is a lot of words on this slide, right? So we have their research question, does a person's quality and quantity of sleep affect their perceived stress? So they created a measure of sleep and they were looking at that perceived stress scale. And they have a good rationale, right? Um, you know, people when people are stressed, they report less sleep. And this could be a problem in college students. And so they do have, you know, a good rationale, but it's all in sentence format. Potentially you could read this off Right, you could read something very similar to this paragraph, but it would be best to present this with bullet points. You know, maybe two or three bullet points, depending on how much they can talk about. Same way with this, you know, healthy sleep. So we have good bullet points kind of set up. Healthy sleep, link between sleep and stress, importance of healthy sleep. You know, maybe you need to have, or maybe it'd be better to have a bullet point that said healthy sleep and a couple sub bullet points, you know, talking about 
you know, different points of healthy sleep. Regardless, I'm not going to go through every one of these. There's too much words on here. You know, compare that to, where to go? Compare that to something like this, right? Lots of words, reduce it down to bullet points and talk about those bullet points. You can still say all this, but you don't need to have it on a slide. Their method section, this kind of looks a little small, doesn't it? If this was in a presentation, let's look at it from current slide. And it, there's a lot of writing on here, right? On this PowerPoint slide, it would be best so we, you can see, hold on, how many sec? So they only have one, uh, one slide on methods. I'd highly suggest that you break apart methods into two or three slides. And the, actually probably three slides. The first one should be all about your participants. So give us some good descriptive information about your participants. You have multiple questions, right? You have ethnicity, you have uh, gender, age, um, and whether they're in school or not. So you have a lot to talk about. So, you know, an entire pr uh, slide just on participants. Then have a slide on like the perceived stress scale. You don't need to go into it too much, but, you know, just talk a little bit about what the, the, um, the, the scale looks at. You know, it measures how stressed the participant is, blah, 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 blah. And, but I would have an entire slide really laid out about the scale that you created. So I would have an entire PowerPoint slide that says, hey, here is the sleep quality and quantity scale. And, you know, list out the questions, talk about some reverse scored ones. What do you do? Did you sum it up? Okay, well, what does, how does the scale range? What does it range from? What does a high score represent? So a little bit more information about the scale that you created. The results. good enough, I guess. It could be a little bit better. This graph is probably a little bit too small. Maybe. Um, get rid of all oh, this. is a I, I mentioned this on some of your homework assignments for the uh, correlation, but on your scatter plot, get rid of this diagonal line. It's not the best fit line. This is actually would be a perfect correlation. So if there's a diagonal line that runs from like one end to the other and it's complete diagonal like this, what is that, like a 45 degree angle? Get rid of that by high, by like double clicking on the graph, like double clicking on the actual dot and then deleting it. Because that's not the line of best fit. Remember in regression, we talked about that line of best fit, which is just that correlation line. Um, this is not it. This is just a perfect correlation. And obviously this is not a perfect correlation. So get rid of that diagonal line. Um, yeah, so this, this slide has a lot of information on it. I would probably talk about your one sample t-test on its own. You know, talk, have a slide that talks about, here are some basic descriptives. Was anything skewed or not skewed? Talk about your one sample t-test. And then on its own PowerPoint slide, talk about the correlation. Um, yeah, so then talk about the correlation. Big point here, make sure this is correct. It's really embarrassing whenever a group is presenting and it's like, well, that's actually not what you found. Or they would say like, oh, this is significant. And then they talk about like this, oh, our data was significant, even though it's very clear that it's not. So please make sure that you're not confused about that. Um, anyways, uh, let me just throw up a couple other ones. These are all on eCampus. Um, now it'll be fine. You guys can go through it. Here's one that has some color to it. So it doesn't have to be just black and white. Here's one that has a decent bit of color. It looks like they have good bullet points. Previous research, good bullet points here. Big wording, nice and easy to read. Very simple. Those who participate more in physical activity will have lower perceived stress scores. Their materials, um, once again, I would like to say I would like a little bit more on the scale that you created. This, is, this isn't enough. Looks like they have two measures. Oh, they did a, a histogram of the, their, the score that the validated scale and then the score, the variable they created. One page on a one sample t test probably would be enough, right? You know, maybe you could have that. Yeah, probably be enough on its own slide. Maybe a picture here would be nice about someone sleeping or stress or something. Throw in a picture. Correlation, obviously, they would talk about it. Conclusion, good bullet points here. Limitations, good bullet points. So you can see they're they're talking a lot. So it looks like they have some notes down here about what they were saying. 
which is fine, obviously, as long as you're not reading off of it. But, you know, they're talking a lot about these bullet points, but information is just presented in bullet point. So really good. I actually really like this presentation. Um, you know, there's obviously some things they can do better, like talk more about their scale. But this is a really good presentation that I would suggest that you uh, potentially base yours off of. All right, so I don't want to bring up any more. There's more examples online. Uh, does anyone have any questions about graphs before I open up, or not graphs, excuse me, presentations before I open up breakout rooms? Should be relatively straightforward, I think. Um, you guys all have this information already, like I said. Uh, it's now just about putting it onto a presentation that looks nice. <clears throat> 